Hi, this is Glenn Guy at the Arcanum. Judging the success of a photograph. Why is it that some photos strike a chord with our audience? And why do some images transcend the reach of our usual audience and become viral? Often folks respond to photos, particularly positively, based upon a range of criteria, which might include the following. The kind of subject matter or genre in which they're particularly interested. A connection based upon familiarity or aspiration with the subject matter or scene in question. The visual appeal and emotive power underpinning the image. An image that's topical, of the moment and trending in social media. A photo of a celebrity, whether shown in a positive or negative light. An appreciation for the physicality and or related challenges such as cost, effort patience and timing involved in making the image. An appreciation for the camera and or image processing skills underpinning the photo. The attractiveness of the subject portrayed. The grandeur or historic nature of the subject or the event associated with it. The exotic nature inherent to the subject or scene. The iconic nature of the image. Its ability to explore notions such as humanity, kindness, war, hunger, motherhood, childhood, lust, anger, power, greed, compassion and empathy. The ability of the photographer to transcend the subject matter and to explore bigger issues such as the human condition, spirituality and our place in the cosmos. Naturally, the image that appeals most to a particular individual is, by definition, subjective. Photography tutors are supposed to be somewhat more objective in their valuation, but at the end of the day, we are all biased. Perhaps the fact that you either like or dislike a particular image is less important than your ability to explain why you feel the way you do. Feedback can be largely meaningless unless it is thoughtful and coherent. Keeping technique in perspective. There's a place for pixel peeping and the like, but at the end of the day, that's only one way to critique an image. And it needs to be put into perspective. Why? Because such concerns are not what's most important in the big wide world. Other than photographers, who cares what lens, shutter speed, aperture or ISO was used to make the image? Likewise, does it matter if there's a little bit of noise or if the image is ever so slightly soft? You have to be able to firstly see these things and consider them to be important before they affect your judgment. And I think it's good for us photographers to appreciate and accept that fact. We make images for ourselves, but we also make them for others. The more communicative your images, the more people will see and respond to them on an emotional level. And that's ultimately what counts most. This is a photography community and, as a photography tutor, it's part of my role to draw attention to issues of technique. However, that should never be at the expense of recognising or rewarding the visual or emotive power within an image. More and more I hope the feedback you provide to your peers will reflect and support this view. You'll be amazed at how opening yourself up to view and respond to images in this way will affect the quality of your own photography. In my cohort on the Arcanum, we have a regular and non-compulsory Photo of the Week competition organised by apprentice and moderator P.T. Morgan. Part of P.T.'s role is to judge the competition, though, from time to time, she'll pass the baton on to someone else. Last week was my turn. Here's the result and the feedback I provided the winner, Mr. Torben Kuhl. This photo of a large wooden building illuminated with warm artificial lighting 
against a night sky painted with the surreal colour of the Aurora Borealis is spectacular. While I'm impressed with the technique underpinning this photo, it is the surreal and exotic nature of the scene and its cinematic qualities that I feel are most important to its success. What's more, I've long wanted to photograph the Aurora and travel to Norway is right up the top of my bucket list. I'm very interested in the notion of duality. The quietness and solidity of the building contrasts markedly against the dynamic and transitory nature of the illuminated sky. This photo seems on the one hand to record a moment in time, but it also seems to explore a moment between events. From a compositional point of view, I like the way the building runs up until the top right hand corner of the frame. I think to enhance visual appeal, photos need to be, on one level, stripped down to the most basic components, including too much information, which incidentally can be the death of a HDR image, can result in unnecessary distraction. With this in mind, I feel the photo would be better with a silhouetted hillside in the background. That would mean getting rid of the trees protruding above the horizon and retouching out the structures that are partly visible in the foreground. Ideally, I'd like to see a little more of the illuminated grass in the very front of the picture, including the bottom left corner. The shape created would provide an opposite, light versus dark and right to left versus left to right shape compared to the hill in the immediate background. I'm not saying I'd necessarily do it myself, but I feel it would produce an even more dynamic image. Beauty lies in simplicity of design as much as it does in the choice of subject matter. Congratulations Torben on an excellent result and all the best for your upcoming trip to Japan. A final piece of advice. My advice is to provide your peers with meaningful feedback that is positive, constructive and from the heart. Ultimately your advice should be in alignment with your own photography. Life affirming. Thanks so much for listening folks. I look forward to sharing more ideas and tutorials with you over the coming weeks and months. Until we meet again, this is Glenn Guy at the Arcanum signing off. Bye for now.